My name is Mike Roberts. I am an account strategy manager in GCS in the Hypo East uh, group and in GCS. And <clears throat> I'm going to go through and explain how to use Comscore at a very high level. What are the types of things it's used for? Uh, what kinds of insights can you pull out of it? This is the homepage for Comscore. If you don't have access, uh, request a subscription. Everyone at Google has access to it. Um, and uh, there are some different versions of like what components you can get access to, but you can get at least the basic version uh, from everyone. Everyone at Google can. So, so this is the, the view. Um, so it's like a Swiss Army knife. There's a bunch of menus up here that cover different things. And there's even like a lot of sub menus. And even when you click into one of these, there's a lot of sub things below that. So um, I'm going to give you a very quick overview. Basically, Comscore, what they do is they look at uh, website traffic across the entire internet. And they are able to look at specific companies. And then when you add those companies up, you can look at things at the aggregate level. So the types of insights that are really powerful from this are things like um, the cl my client's website traffic is going down while the category is going up, or their competitors are getting three times more traffic to their site than, uh, than, than they are. Um, it also can look at the types of audiences. So, um, so if I want like the website traffic, let's just start there. Uh, the key measures is where I would go for that. Um, and I would want to select multi-platform, uh, United States, May, keep all these things the same. When you go to edit, um, this is the type of media that you want to look at. So generally what I would do is um, I would go to pick a list and I would actually, you know, I've saved, you can save lists and make it really easy. So like I would go and select eight competitors and I would save them, I would save the set. So let's look at one of my clients, Tilly's. Um, so I'll type in, I'll go to the search page, look at, type in Tilly's and click on this. Sometimes there's multiple ones that show up and it might have like a little P next to it, a little M next to it. Those stand for different levels of hierarchy that um, are associated. So the P stands for parent, M stands for media. So, um, you wanna make sure you have as similar uh, types of entities as possible. So if you select five different websites, you want them to all be the P if you can. Or, um, and there's a way that I can show you to, to kind of look at uh, what's available in terms of like the, what the hierarchy is within how Comscore categorizes, you know, a site to be at a parent level or a, a brand level or whatnot. So if you're like, uh, you know, Bank of America, you might have 30 different websites and you know the parent is going to have all of them rolled up to it so it's going to include you know 25 websites at the parent level but if you only include you know Wells Fargo if you only include one of the sub brands it's going to make it look like Bank of America is like so much larger when it may not actually be so in this case it's very simple just select p and then click on this and it'll bring it over to the next category maybe I'll also look at some of their competitors like uh, forever 21 and in this case, there's two, but I'm going to try to select the P because that's going to be consistent. Um, so I also want to look at um, uh, who's another competitor for Tilly's. Um, maybe Gap. Uh, again, there's a bunch of different ones. I would use my judgment. Um, you know, Gap Factory doesn't seem like it's the right one because it's not uh, the exact same thing or it kind of has... I'm not sure what the factory is. It must be the factory outlet's not the main parent, so I'll just do the parent. Um, and you can select more and more. But like, you know, if I wanted to save this set, for example, I can say, you know, uh, Tilly's plus competitors. And it looks like it doesn't like that I use the plus sign and competitors. Oh, it doesn't like the apostrophe either. Okay. Okay, list saved successfully. I'll press okay. 
I'll select which measures I care about. So this is like what metrics do I care about measuring for these websites. Um, this looks at the total digital population. This looks at desktop only. Um, with some things you can view mobile, some things you can't. And so in this case, maybe I care about page views. I'll add that video views. Maybe I care about um, total visits and average views per visit. And maybe I want also like total visits for the total population, the median adult age. Let's say that's enough. Uh, I'll select OK. And then I will run the report. And it's going to give me a data dump. Now, if I were to select a bunch of, you know, I could select 30 different competitors or, or websites. And then I could use the aggregate as like an industry average. Um, I could just look at the top couple like I did here. Uh, this basically shows, you know, the metrics that I selected at the, at the, at the column level. So total visits, total minutes, et cetera. Um, and then it shows for the total audience, the total group of people that it's considering. So out of all the people that they look at on all websites, you know, in this case, the total digital population is uh, this size, which is, uh, looks like it's 2 billion people uh, for their data set. Because there's, it's in millions and it's 2 million. So it's, um, that's how you'd read that. So for Gap, it looks like there's 259 million uh, minutes. I, I'm sorry, this is minutes, not um, people. That makes more sense. So 259 million minutes uh, spent on Gap's website. Uh, and they have just under 12 million or 12, yeah, uh, yeah, 12 million because it's in the thousands uh, visits to Gap and Tilly's only has a uh, little over 1 million. So Gap is crushing it compared to Tilly's. Um, so that's how you would read that. And then what you could do is download this here and export it to CSV or Excel. And this is where I would start to build charts in PowerPoint or Sheets or something like that. And, you know, at this level, I'm kind of looking at what are the data points that pop that are interesting to me. And do I need to like go back and adjust something? Because I can go back and look at a different date range, add in some different sites. You know, maybe I want some different metrics, you know. Um, so before I download anything, I make sure there's like a story that I think is worth telling. Um, and then I'll, I'll export it at that point. So let's all look at another thing, um, which is I think audience duplication is really interesting and cross visiting. The way I've used this before is by looking at um, out of five different competitors, how many of them have the same audience or not? Or do these two have the same audience, but these other two actually have a quite different audience? And I might look at the makeup of that audience. So I might find the average demographics of age, how much time they're spending on the different sites, um, whether they visit each other's sites or not. And I can look at it over time and see like, are the audiences of these two companies starting to get more and more similar or less and less similar, you know, which is an interesting thing. So cross visiting. So under, under media metric under cross visiting is where I would look at that and target audience. So generally I leave it open to total audience, but you could look at, you know, if you're a brand that only sells to females within a certain age range or something, you could look at, at that. Um, so that's where you would want to, this is setting the comparison that it makes it to. So if you say, you know, the population that I care about is this demographic and then I want to compare, you know, Tilly's versus forever 21 against that, that benchmark. So this sets the benchmark. Uh, the media in the columns, this is, you know, just works just like uh, the one before. And um, so because I already saved a set, I have Tilly's and competitors, I can just select that and I don't have to go back and re-pull this, like research for them uh, if I want to use the same competitors. And I need to actually select them still. So I'll add them. And then 
you know, this is again where you can select the uh, the metrics that you care about. And then I'll run the report. And it takes a little while sometimes. There's a lot of data that it's crunching. And there are a few metrics for this one because it's really just looking at the overlap. So it's going to show the um, the shared audience. Uh, so between Forever 21 and Gap, it looks like the shared audience is 1.2 million people within the month of May of this year. And but within Forever 21, obviously there's um, uh, that's not a comparable number because it's comparing itself to itself. And then if you look at the percentage um, of the vertical, this shows that 27% of the Forever 21 audience also goes to Gap um, versus only 4% of the Forever 21 audience also goes to Tilly's. And then uh, it does the same thing for all the competitors. So. Um, what I've also used this done to, to visualize this is I'll just Google um, a Venn diagram overlap chart and, and get like a free tool that puts the chart together for me. And then I'll put that on a slide and I'll just use the shape tool to, <coughs> to put, well, let me just show you. That'll be easier. So this is a presentation I presented to the CMO of Comcast, and this, I use this data, um, the cross-visiting report specifically, to build this out. And I was trying to understand the evolving bundle of um, streaming platforms because people are canceling and cutting the cord for cable and signing up for these other streaming platforms. And I was trying to get a sense of like, do all these platforms have the same audience? Um, how large are each other audiences and how much is the overlap between them. So when I looked at this, I looked at the unique web visitors, website visitors between Amazon and Netflix. And I was able to calculate that there's 52 million of those. And then I overlapped Hulu on top of that and found that there's 22 million uh, people who subscribe or at least visit the website in this case of uh, Hulu and Amazon. And then there's 9 million that have visited in the same month, uh, all three of the platforms. And then I added in DirecTV Now as well, which is smaller, uh, wasn't as much of an important focus. And then I, the conclusion is this is the most common bundle that people are bundling for themselves or that are building for themselves is, because um, I went through and looked at a whole bunch of different views and kind of um, looked at a lot of websites, a lot of different streaming services. And this is the one that popped up as the, the largest amount of people as well as the largest amount of overlap between them. And then I did the same th sort of thing here and then I, I compared it to YouTube and said, these consumers are researching how to build this bundle and they're doing that on YouTube because they're looking at trailers and et cetera, et cetera. But this, the point is like, in this case was the audience overlap that uh, YouTube uh, visitors, 81% of them are visiting Amazon 78% visited Netflix, um, and who uh, reached you reach 70% almost of Hulu audiences. And so YouTube is a way that you can reach all of these consumers, even if they're on platforms that don't have advertising like Netflix. So that's how I'd use this cross visiting report uh, on Comsquare. Let's say another, you know, um, Audience duplication does something similar. Uh, I would say a lot of these reports will function in the same way. I see, I'd say there's another area with um, video viewing where you can look at cross viewing. And this is something, it's the same, it works the same way, but it, it allows you to look at uh, from a video perspective instead of from a website traffic perspective. There's also a mobile specific one and I like to look at uh, Mobile Lens Audience Profile. Now, this isn't necessarily available um, for everyone. I think it's available to most Googlers, but 
the, the high level of mobile lens is it adds on additional, it combines a survey with a clickstream data, which is what we've been looking at is clickstream data. So what are people saying they do and then what are they actually doing? And I'll look at, um, you know, three month average and I will look at, um, so this is where you can select which survey components you care about. And there's a bunch of different subcategories. So if I look at the behaviors, uh, I can see like OTT device usage by activity and look at, you know, played an online multiplayer game on a smart TV. And I can say, okay, that's the data point I want. I'm going to add that to here. And I will be able to, um, to have that be, uh, a cut that I will look at. Um, and then what I will say is like, say there's another thing that I want and I want to look at mobile phone usage. Um, and I care about someone or let's just look at device usage by, um, I don't know. Say, say I wanted to also look at like listened to music or watched videos. Let's do watch videos frequency um, almost every day. So, you know, if I selected that and I did it, watch them on their mobile phone. Um, so this is now combining the audiences where it's saying, I want to only look at people who, who are um, playing games on a smart TV. Um, uh, over, o uh, over an OTT service, and they're also watching videos on their phone. Uh, I can also select this and, and make it or, so it's gonna make the, the audience larger if I change this to or, and I say like, I, I want uh, them to be the OTT smart TV audience or the mobile gaming audience, and that's gonna be, or the mobile video audience, and that's gonna make it a larger audience. So I'll, I'll do that, I'll select okay. Um, for the target rows, um, this is where I'm looking at uh, the websites that I care about them visiting. So, you know, I can look at a whole category or I can look at custom targets and, um, no, I'm sorry. This allows you me to, to cross tab is what this does. So if I say I wanted to look at a certain de demographic or like any other survey question, I can see the overlap between, you know, the rows and columns of people who meet the mobile phone, uh, watch a video on their mobile phone almost every day with also their education level. So I can say like, you know, people that have some college and, and hold on command and say, select multiple of these so I can include anyone and like if they have any college experience and this is making them or, so if they had some college or an associate's degree or a bachelor's degree or a postgrad. And I'll select, select okay and then I'll run the report. And then it gives me the cross tab, which is really helpful at zeroing in on the activity. So the, the custom category that I had before was percentage of people that, um, that w like watched a video on their phone every day. And then also met this column one criteria, which is, um, you know, went to college basically, and I can see the percentage of people that 69% uh, of uh, people that went to college, you know, are watching mobile phone, like videos on their phone almost every day. Um, and I can compare that to the base of 76%. So it looks like fewer people, you know, in college are watching videos on their phone every day uh, or that have went to college than people who are not is just like an example. So that's how I'd use that. Uh, there's some other things in here that I won't get into for sake of time, but you know, there's uh, reach and frequency for video. You can look at different segments. Uh, you can look at different target profiles. So if you, your, your uh, client says that they want to reach a certain audience, you can go in and understand like the, the specific target profile, learn a lot about that audience, where they go on the internet, what, they're, what they look like things like that. So that's high level overview of Comscore. It's super valuable. When I export the data, I then um, build, you know,
charts within slides that expresses it because this doesn't visualize data very well at all, but it's a good place to, to source it. So very flexible, covers all kinds of industries.